today I wanted to talk about why mice need to live in large enclosures and why a 10 gallon tank or a critter trial type cage is not enough for any number of mice to live in. So the minimum enclosure size for many animals across the board, things like hamsters, rats, rabbits, has come a long way in recent years, but there's still many people that believe it's okay to house mice in small enclosures. It is not. The recognised minimum for mice here in the UK by rescues and pet owners is 80 by 50 centimetres on the base. That is the same minimum we give out for hamsters, and for good reason. So if we look at mice in the wild related to our fancy mice, Although they do have a relatively small radius of travel compared to other rodent species, they will travel miles and miles in one night. It is still around 50 feet or so from their nest area, and that is still 15 times the size of the enclosure behind me. So why do mice need large enclosures? The first reason is that mice are incredibly, incredibly active and busy animals. Spend just five minutes in a room with mice during their most active hours, and you'll see them running, climbing, digging, looking for food. Arguably they're much more active and utilizing of any space you give them than something like a hamster. The second reason is to simply have the space to give your mice everything they need, especially when you've got multiple mice living in one enclosure. You are gonna to want to have multiple suitable size wheels, multiple hides, multiple water sources, tunnels, climbing toys, enrichment, that simply will not fit into a 10 gallon tank and let me show you what I mean. So just to demonstrate, this is the closest thing that I have got to a 10 gallon tank. Not the exact measurements, I think a 10 gallon is closer to 50 by 25 by 30 centimeters. This is 40 by 35 by 25 centimeters, I think. So it would be a little bit taller and a bit more skinnier than this, but similar size, similar dimensions. And I'm gonna try to set this up. So for mice to be able to burrow, you want to have at least six inches, preferably more of bedding, and that is about halfway up. So the next thing, of course, is places for them to hide and sleep, and if you have multiple mice, you are gonna to want to have multiple hides. So these ones are literally the smallest ones I've got. I do prefer to have larger hides for my mice just because they are a group, and I want them to have as much space as possible, but that will not fit in here. Next is a wheel, now the minimum is eight inches, but a lot of people are preferring to use 10 inches, and if you have larger mice, I do recommend that, but that will take up even more space, so that's one wheel. And of course, if you have multiple mice, you are gonna want to give them multiple wheels, so that is two wheels. <laughs> Obviously, also water sources, so water bowls or water bottles. I'm not gonna bother to attach a water bottle, but I have got a bowl. Um, and I did have a platform to put this on because otherwise they are going to vary this, but I don't really know where to put this. Um, oh my gosh. There? Oh my goodness. There, right. Um, um, that can go there. There is the water. <laughs> Then of course there's things like enrichment and cork tunnels are really good because they can chew these, they can climb in them, they also act as a hide, but I don't think this is going to fit anywhere in there, so sorry mice, you're gonna have to have just a toilet roll instead. Obviously also chew toys for them to chew on, so those can just go somewhere in there. And then is the problem of giving them climbing toys and climbing opportunities. I think even if this was the extra, 10 centimetres or so that a 10 gallon tank is, there is not gonna be room for hammocks or ladders or climbing toys, so this is the best that I can do. So obviously this does not fit, I cannot physically put a lid on this and keep the mice in if I wanted to, and something is gonna have to give, either I'm gonna have to use smaller than the minimum wheels or not very much bedding at all, and that is just not fair on the mice. But it looks cute, right? I mean, they've got everything they need. They probably just won't stay in here because I can't contain them. They might just go back to their big enclosure or travel the 50 feet or so away from their nest area. Who knows? <laughs> so are there any negatives to having your mice in a larger enclosure? Yes, if you're not doing it correctly. Oftentimes, some mouse owners or mouse breeders will try to tell you that an enclosure that's too large 
or doesn't have enough mice packed into it is going to cause stress to the mice. And while in part this can be true, it just means you're not setting up your enclosure correctly. Obviously if you have a large enclosure with just a hide on one side and a hide on the other, with a big expanse of space in between, you might start seeing stress behaviours in your mice and them darting between cage items because they are a prey species and they don't want to be visible to predators. If you don't have enough toys and enrichment to add coverage to an enclosure, to make it feel safe and secure for them, you probably are better off going slightly smaller, obviously still within the minimum, but having coverage and having things in that enclosure is much better than having a huge one. Another downside, I guess, to keeping mice in larger enclosures is not being able to access them as easy, or losing them in all of the enrichment, and although this can be concerning or disappointing to new owners, it's really important to think about whether you're setting up the enclosure for you, or for the mice to enjoy. Now, there's no harm when you first get your mice in the first couple of weeks, keeping them in a slightly smaller enclosure that's easier to access, just to bond with them and handle them, but ultimately long term, your mice deserve to have as much space and enrichment as you can provide. So although there is some negatives to having mice in larger enclosures if not done correctly, they still deserve to have more than just a small tub with a toilet roll and a food bowl. But if you don't want to take my word for it, we can look at some scientific studies. Now it's really important to bear in mind that there's not a lot of funding out there for all the studies we would like to do on rats and mice, to learn more about their behaviour and their housing, and those that are carrying out and funding these studies aren't usually the ones that are going to benefit from the results, suggesting they need bigger setups. Most of the time mice in scientific studies or research papers you're reading are going to be lab mice kept in typical rack setups with little to no enrichment, and they need to have larger numbers of these mice to have larger sample sizes for their experiments, and it has to be as economical ergonomical and sterile as possible, so for them they view it as being beneficial to house them the way they do, but enrichment is not at the forefront. There are however some people in the industry making changes, and it's produced some interesting studies. Overall, bar one of these studies, they were all conducted in the last year or so, and it does seem like the scientific community are starting to realise just how important having more space and more enrichment is for mice, because it could be affecting their results. So, this first study was published in 2021, and it looked at the effects of housing mice in two cage sizes, arguably both still well below the minimum for pet mice, but still, and they wanted to see if the size of the cage affected their reproductive ability, their exploratory behaviour, anxiety and working memory. The results actually showed that mice in these smaller enclosures had a significantly decreased delivery rate of the offspring, and the offspring also had a lower survival rate. The mice were also less willing to explore and had high levels of anxiety. This next article was a study conducted this year looking at 200 papers across the board to explore the links between housing size and quality for lab mice and the effects on their health. Across all of the papers they looked at, which did include around 6,500 mice that were used in all of these studies, they did find that conventional lab cages and lab setups were associated with poorer health and they were significantly increasing the effects of diseases such as cancer, cardiovascular disease, anxiety, depression, and the mortality rate of the mice. In certain cancer studies, mice in smaller setups develop larger tumours on average than mice living in enriching setups. They even go as far as suggesting the reason some drugs developed don't work that well on humans is because they're being studied on stressed mice. This paper is a bit of an older one, but a scientist from Bristol University studied just how willing and curious mice would be to gain a bit of extra space and train them to press a lever that opened a door into an attached cage. He actually found mice were willing to put the same amount of work into gaining access to a little bit more space as they were to basic needs like food and water. And it did not matter just how much bigger the extra space was, the mice were just willing to work to get even a little bit more space. He also carried out another study to show that mice seemed to be less stressed in larger, enriching cages. He gave the mice the ability to self-administer antidepressant drugs, which is a bizarre concept in itself, but he found the mice were less likely to drink the antidepressant water when they were in a larger cage with more materials to chew on and nest with. Mice in smaller cages with not much enrichment administered the antidepressants a lot more often. 
So this last study is perhaps my favourite of the bunch because it works with real enrichment and cage items and cages that we would use with our pet mice at home and this was conducted back in 2018 and it talks about how there's been a lot of resistance to housing lab mice in enriching setups just in case it starts to affect the variation in experimental results. This study had three enclosures set up for the mice, three of which were typical lab cages with varying degrees of enrichment. The first one was just bedding on the bottom, second one had bedding and nesting material, and the third one had deeper bedding, nesting material, tunnel and shelter as enrichment. The fourth cage was a typical lab cage, but it was connected to a Savic Mickey XL, and if you're not familiar with this, this is a good, okay cage to use with mice, because it does meet the 80 by 50 centimetres minimum. And this cage had a bunch more enrichment things like hammocks, coconuts, bridges, nesting material, and this was all switched around on a regular basis. So this study found the behaviour and welfare of the mice didn't significantly differ between the mice in bare lab cages and those in lab cages with more enrichment. However, those that had access to the Mickey cage displayed virtually no stress or stereotypical behaviours, things like bar chewing, etc. Fecal samples taken from the mice also found lower levels of glucocorticoid metabolites, and these are commonly found in mice that have chronic stress, in the mice housed in the Mickey cage. They also found no evidence that housing mice in these enriching conditions affected other experimental results at all. So in conclusion, space and enrichment come hand in hand. You can't really have a large enclosure with no enrichment, and you can't really put enough enrichment into a tiny enclosure. Ultimately, the more space you have, the more room you've got to give your mice enrichment and provide your mice with a choice of what they want to interact with. But I hope this video has been insightful. I'll link all of the research papers that I spoke about in the description, just in case you want to give them a read. But don't let people who benefit from housing their mice in small setups try and tell you that giving them a full enriching life is a bad thing. And don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!